In this video, I'm going to be putting together an off-meta build, testing it in some heroic content, but if I go down, I will delete the entire build. Hello, I'm Abrax and welcome to Off Meta, where I will be taking underused or just bad exotics, named gear or gear sets, and putting a build together around them. Then, taking it into a heroic mission or control point to test the build out. However, if I'm downed or I'm killed, I will deconstruct the entire build, losing all of the gear, weapons, materials, and time I've put into it. The rules are simple, this is an Off Meta build, so no Fox's Prayer, no Contractor's Gloves, and no Revive Hive, because that would be cheating. This time round, I'm going to be using an exotic mentioned in the comments of a previous video by people like Much Luck and Zero Media, and that's the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads. Why, you might ask? Okay, but in all seriousness, these knee pads actually carry a unique piece of utility that actually makes sense in very few builds. Originally, when I started planning this video, I was going in a completely different direction with the build, and ended up creating something pretty interesting for group play, but not really great for solo heroics. You know what, let's go back to the beginning, and I will take you through my thought process and how I ended up at the build I ended up with. Let's start with the centerpiece of the build, the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads and their claim to fame, which is the talent... Hardcore parkour! Hardcore parkour! Performing a cover to cover or vault reloads your drawn weapon and grants 25% bonus armor for 5 seconds. So what would really benefit from these knee pads? My first thought was slow reloading weapons, LMGs right? A weapon type that to be honest I don't really use that often, I mean if you do let me know in the comments. Currently I can't say I actually have a build that uses an LMG, so it felt like a solid way to go for an off meta build. Going down that LMG instant reload route, the next thing would be to build the magazine capacity as much as possible, which felt like a good excuse to use a three-piece bonus from the new Brazos set, giving an extra 20% mag capacity. This, along with the 50 round box from Gunner, gave an M60 that I pulled out the stash 180 rounds. Not bad. I picked up the M60 because I just felt like something with a low RPM and a good thudding damage. Then, to fill the build out, I got on one piece of Cheska for the crit chance, and a piece of Petrov for the LMG damage. But, while I was debating the core attributes, secondary weapon, and the skills, I realised what I've actually created was a build that buffed team damage while in cover, and suppressed everything I shot at. What I had created was the perfect companion build for last week's Bloody Knuckles build, which is in the description if you want to check that out. And I kind of knew that for solo heroics, it just wasn't going to work, so I had to go back to the drawing board. I started thinking about the weapon that I actually grabbed for the secondary, the exotic SMG Backfire. Another weapon that really benefited from not being reloaded, avoiding all of the negatives from the weapon while reaping the rewards. And here was my new starting point. The Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads plus Backfire was a way to build up to an extra 200% crit damage without having to take any damage from the bleed. And I felt like this was something that could really be pushed, so I started pulling gear out of the stash and crafted what I needed to put as much crit damage as I could on this build, landing just under 200% crit damage. Fully optimised, this would touch 200%, but sadly in this video, I just didn't have time to grind the materials I needed to optimise. Either way, this, plus the talent from Backfire, is getting close to 400% crit damage, which is nothing to scoff at. Alright, enough theory crafting. let's go over the build that I actually landed on. The primary focus ended up being crit damage. The goal was to build as much as possible, bolster it with the talent from Backfire, and use the ninja bike knee pads to avoid the bleed. Originally, the plan was to run this as an all red build, but I feel like this might involve a slightly more aggressive style of play, so I thought a few blue cores wouldn't hurt. Alright, for the mask I am running the Winter Special Chillout Named Mask. If you haven't come across this fancy piece of kit yet, last winter during the holiday event, Chillout was released into the loot pool for a limited time. This is a Gilla mask that comes with one minor attribute and two mod slots, making it a great mask for stacking one single attribute like, I don't know, crit damage. The one I am using for this build has 5% armor for the Gilla brand, armor for the core attribute, and crit damage for the minor attribute. And in the two mod slots, of course, I've added more crit damage, giving this one piece of gear 36% crit damage. And if you want your very own chill out mask, keep an eye out for the next winter event. Hopefully it will be reintroduced then. For the chest, I am using a Sokolov chest for the 10% SMG damage from the brand, and I have weapon damage in the core attribute, and crit damage and chance for the minor attributes. For the mod, I've added a little more crit damage. 
For the talent, uh, wait, why did I make this yellow? Give me a sec. All right, that's better. For the talent, I have gone with Obliterate, which is an obvious damage increase for a build with a decent crit chance. The holster is a Grupo holster for the 15% crit damage from the Bron bonus, and I have weapon damage, crit damage, and crit chance for the attributes. The backpack is the named Walker backpack, the Matador, to give the build a little bit more survivability. I have this rolled with weapon damage, crit damage, and crit chance, with crit damage in the mod slot. This also comes with the talent Perfect Adrenaline Rush, which gives the build a good amount of bonus armor depending on the amount of enemies around me, which will stack nicely with the bonus armor from Backfire. For the gloves, I have a pair of Sokolov gloves, giving me the two-piece brand set bonus of 15% crit damage. Then I have armor for the core and crit chance and crit damage for the minor attributes. For the knees, of course, I am using the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads. Fun fact for new agents, the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads are actually a reference to the Ninja Bike Messenger backpack from the Division 1, which is hands down the best exotic ever. bunny. The ninja bike knee pads have weapon damage, crit chance and crit damage for the attributes and they have the talent parkour. Performing a cover to cover or vaulting reloads your drawn weapon and grants you 25% bonus armor for 5 seconds. A solid talent which I'm hoping I will be putting to good use. On to weapons. Like I've said a few times, I'm running the exotic SMG Backfire that comes with SMG damage, crit chance and magazine size. For its talent it has payment in kind. Dealing damage to enemies adds a stack of 1% crit damage, up to 200 stacks, lasting 10 seconds. On reload, apply a 10 second bleed to yourself, which deals 0.5% armor damage per stack. I've always thought this was a bit of a weird one, I'm assuming the bleed comes from the barbed wire that our character, in their infinite wisdom, wrapped around the magazine. Now I'm all about aesthetics, but it's not what I'd really call a high IQ move. Because I like to balance a close up weapon with a bit of range, I thought I'd run with the rail splitter for the secondary. I'm actually a fan of this AR, I get that it is not the most effective weapon damage wise, but it just feels really good to use, and currently I have it on a favourite glass cannon build of mine. Rail splitter comes with assault rifle damage, health damage, and I have damage to targets out of cover in the third attribute. For its talent, it comes with perfectly accurate, simply giving it 50% accuracy, turning it into a laser beam. For the mods, I have crit chance everywhere and the sturdy extended mag. I don't usually talk about the sidearms unless they're important, but in this build it actually has a bit of a role to play. Here I have the named pistol a TDI card custom with pistol damage and its unique attribute of plus one skill tier. And I've rolled reformation for the talent. Headshots grant 30% repair skill for 15 seconds. The plan with the pistol is to combine it with the reinforcer chem launcher. Drawing the pistol, adding the skill tier to the chem, landing a headshot to get that extra 30% skill repair, and dropping a chem at your feet for a solid heal. Simple, but effective. That also segues me nicely into the skills and specialization. The specialization I have here is Gunner, for the 10% armor on kill, rate of fire on kill, and to unlock the Banshee Pulse for some needed CC. The skills I am running here are the Reinforcer Chem for an easy heal, and the Banshee Pulse for a directable CC, making it easier to get in close safer. That's the build as it came together, and here is a quick overview for those of you who like to see the full picture. The attributes I have landed on are 57.5% crit chance, 194.7% crit damage which goes up to 394.7% with the backfire fully buffed, 70% headshot damage, 1.1 mil armor, and 115k armor on kill. Okay, time to take this build into a heroic mission to see how it really plays out, and this time I have a slightly less... bias way of picking the mission, which could work in my favor, or not. So here is the build, now it's time to try it out in a mission, but this time I have something slightly different planned. Usually I pick the mission just kind of willy-nilly, which can be a little bit bias. I can pick the mission that suits the build the best, and that's not really fair. So I came up with this. I have added all 12 of the main missions to this wheel, and when I click it, it's going to spin and pick one at random. So let's see where I'm taking this build. This could either work for me or against me. Against me. Definitely against me. So we're at the Space Admin HQ. We have the build. Let's see how it runs. So the goal here is going to be to use Backfire, build up the stacks, get some extra crit damage, then use the Ninja Bite knee pads to instant reload, negating the bleed. Should work. Don't see why it wouldn't work. Let's give it a go. 
You know what? I was wrong. This opening is perfect. And with the Ninja Bike knee pads, you can use cover to cover and vaulting for some hardcore parkour. It is very weird using to cover to cover. I don't think I ever use cover to cover. I don't even know where I'm going. There we go. Currently running with 140 plus extra crit damage, which is nice. 150. Okay, that was good. Good start. Backfire has solid crit damage. Yeah, it doesn't have any range. No range. Which is why I bought this. Still taking advantage of the build's 200%. Nearly 200% crit damage. Switch to the pistol. Drop a chem. Maybe get a headshot for some extra heal. Works perfectly. I'm reloading. I don't want to do that. One massive problem I have with Backfire is that... And I just want to reload all the time. I'm one of those people. I will take one shot and I'll reload. So not reloading feels weird. Uh, same with cover to cover. I don't really use cover to cover. Although it's quite a big mechanic in game, it's not that effective in comparison to just standing in the right spot. So this build is fighting a lot of muscle memory. So far, so good. Oh, I missed some loot. Absolute rookie mistake. Right, I'm getting into the swing of this now. Between the insta reload from the knee pads and the bonus armor from Matador, this is feeling pretty good. I'm still kind of lamenting my forgotten loot, but you know, I'll get over it. I'll tell you, the rail spotter. Underrated. Super underrated. This is the section I was kind of dreading because this is a lot more ranged than it is up close. It would be nice if I kept the stacks for a little bit longer, I will say. Or if they deteriorated a bit like, um, ah, no. Yeah, if they broke down a little bit more like Striker, maybe. <laughs> That's how you use these knee pads. All right, that flowed nice. That felt good. So that wasn't as bad as I thought, to be honest. I was expecting it to be significantly messier, should we say. I'm going to set the crane off, then I'm going to go hide on the other side of the room, because it's safe. If you're watching this thinking, oh yeah, okay, that's a pretty safe way of doing this section, they do also spawn there, just so you've been warned. I still kind of feel like maybe I should have gone for an LMG for the secondary, just to really take advantage of these knee pads, but the rail splitter is doing a pretty fine job. So this section might be interesting. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've played this mission before. You know where the guy spawns. He's quite a way away. Hopefully I can pick off the weak point on his backpack before he jumps down. That's how I'd usually do it, but I don't have as much damage as I usually would have. Because if he gets down, I can see it being a bit messy. Let's see how this goes. To be completely honest, I'm, I'm gutted. This is the second time I've had to record one of these. Not because I went down. Here, look, here's proof. Here's proof. Ding. But, being the genius I am, the audio wasn't recording. All right, I'm gonna hide here. Wait for him to spawn. And then we're gonna pop his weak point there. Got it. Then burst him down before he even gets down. Easy peasy. And complete. And an exotic holster, I'll take that too. Nice. So, the build. A few notes. I actually quite like it. I I wouldn't mind trying it with like, maybe more blue cores. At first I was going to run it all red and it didn't really... I don't know. I was a bit worried about getting up close with an SMG with no blue cores. But it played well. I do think you could get rid of the knee pads get rid of backfire and you'd still have a solid build. It's just a high crit damage build. Any SMG would slot really nicely into this or switch out the gloves and the chest 
and you could pretty much put in whatever kind of um, weapon type you'd like, and it would just be a solid all-round build. The knee pads and backfire gel perfectly. You don't want the bleed from backfire, and the knee pads completely negate that. That's fantastic, that worked great. It took a little bit to get into the swing of it, because all of my muscle memory wants me to constantly reload, go into every encounter with a full magazine, and I don't really use cover to cover. At this point in game, it's less about cover to cover and more about positioning. You tend to stand more like this, so you can just move in and out of cover. You're more mobile, you've got more movement instantly, and when you're attached to cover, you can't quite move as much. So it was weird, it was weird using that, but overall, not bad, enjoyed it, good build. Let's do a quick conclusion, let's wrap this up. This isn't a bad build, and it's one I could see myself actually running with. However, the gameplay loop of using Backfire to build the stacks of crit damage, then the Ninja Bike knee pads to negate that bleed, goes against a lot of muscle memory. Usually, I constantly reload. You don't want to get caught short when you switch target, or move to the next encounter. On top of that, I don't really use a lot of cover or cover to cover movement, so this also felt a little weird. The best way to use cover in the Division 2 is by using your positioning to your advantage, being behind an obstacle to use parts of your character to avoid damage, effectively taking cover without sticking to it. This also keeps your movements ready for split second decisions, whereas when you're in cover, you're actually attached to that cover, so it can take moments to detach before you can start evading. It's definitely a different way to play, but not necessarily a bad one. I think I might actually play around with this build a little, maybe swap out Backfire for a Vector, and the Ninja Bike knee pads for the improvised knee pads with a lot of crit damage, just to see how it plays as a high crit SMG build. If you enjoyed this different take on a build video, let me know by leaving a comment with a random, underused, or just bad piece of gear or weapon in the Division 2 that you would like to see in a future off-meta video. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for future Division 2 content. As always, a massive thank you to my supporters over on Patreon for helping me make this channel the best it can be. If you would like to join them, you can support the channel for as little as £1 a month. You'll find the link for the Patreon in the description below. Or you can also become a channel member by clicking the join button next to subscribe. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. I've just started recording OBS just because of Rabbit.